Hey guys, welcome to section 6.3. In this section, we'll talk about how to multiply radicals. Let's get started. So as a review uh, from section 6.1 and 6.2, we talked about the product rule and we used it quite a fair bit going in this direction, meaning we always were able to take a big number to something like 98, split it up into 49 times two, and then split up the radical because we had a product in the middle. So we had the square root of 49 times the square root of two, and then square root of 49 ended up being seven. So we have up until now almost exclusively used this rule in this direction, unidirectionally to simplify radicals or to break apart big numbers or big radicands into smaller ones. Now let's see what happens if we use the rule but in reverse. So keep in mind that an equation or an equality means both directions are true. So if we can start with this and move to the left, we have to be able to start with this and go back to where we came from. So in this section, we'll actually talk about how to multiply two radicals together, which is to say, go from here, where you have two, maybe more uh, radicals that are individually getting multiplied, and glue them back together inside a single radical. Before we do that, we have to ensure a couple of things. We have to make sure that the index have to be the same, or the indices have to match. So if this is the nth root of a, this has to be the nth root of something as well. Now here I wrote this in red. The radicands, or the thing that you're taking the root of, a in this case, b in this case, they do not need to be the same. So a couple of examples. Let's say we're asked to simplify negative five radical 14 times four radical six. So this is one square root with a coefficient on the outside getting multiplied by another square root with a coefficient on the outside. So essentially we would do what you think intuitively you would want to do here. We would multiply the coefficients together. So negative five times four gives us negative 20. And because I have a square root here and a square root here, I can put both the 14 and the six under a single radical with a product in the middle. So 14 times six is 84, so we end up here. Now, again, just to remind everyone, we've normally gone in this direction where we say, hey, let's split up 84 into something else. And then because there's a product, we can split this up and then turn it into two individual radicals. Now we're doing the exact same thing, but in reverse. We have two individual radicals getting multiplied. We put them under a single radical because the indices are the same or the index here. And then we're left with negative 20 times the square root of 84. Now remember, with radicals, the overarching principle is with numbers, you want to leave the smallest possible number inside the radical. So now we're back to simplifying or reducing square root of 84. What's the largest number less than 84 on the list of perfect squares? 81. So the square root of 81 is 9, but 81 is not a factor of 84, so we can't use that. Next number is 64, 64 is not a factor, and you actually get up all the way to four before you can find a factor of 84. So 84 is the same as four times 21. Because this is a product, I can split this radical up down the middle. So then I get into square root of four times square root of 21. Square root of four is two, so that goes there. Square root of 21 remains as such. Now we can recognize this or the fact that this doesn't break down further because the largest number less than 21 on the list of perfect squares is 16. 16 is not a factor, neither is nine, neither is four, and then we're back to one. So that means square root of 21 remains as square root of 21. We can't do anything with it. So what we're allowed to do is rewrite square root of 84 as two times the square root of 21. And then remember that there was a negative 20 out in the front. So negative 20 times square root of 84 is the same as negative 20 times this thing, which is two times square root of 21. Negative 20 times two is negative 40 times the square root of 21. So this is our final answer. 
So when we multiply two radicals, we first make the radicands get multiplied, or we first make the radicands bigger so that we can eventually simplify it to be as small as possible. In this example, we don't have square roots, but we have cube roots instead. The process and the procedure is exactly the same, except you're just thinking of a list of perfect cubes instead of perfect squares. So because my indices are the same, here I have a cube root and also a cube root, I can combine both of these under a single radical using the product rule, but in reverse. So instead of splitting this up down the middle and breaking it apart into 18 and 15, I can glue these back together under a single radical. 18 times 15 is 270, so that's what I get. And now I have to find the cube root of 270. Again, we think of the largest number on the list of perfect cubes that's less than 270. It's 216, but it's not a factor. Next number is uh, 125. 125 is not a factor. For 64, 64 is not a factor either. And then we get to 27, and thankfully 27 turns out to be a factor. So we can rewrite 270 as 27 times 10. And now we can use the product rule again, but going in the forward direction, and split this up because I have a product in the middle. So this turns into the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 10, and the 12 is just coming along for the right. The 12 came from 2 times 6, that gave us 12. So I have a 12 here, 12 here, 12 there, 12 there. That's the same 12 that just keeps coming along. At this stage, we recognize that the cube root of 27 is 3 and 12 times 3 is 36. And that's it. Something from polynomials. So if the question were to say distribute 3x into 5y minus 6p, hopefully you remember that we would multiply the numbers together or the coefficients together. So 3 times 5 gives us the 15. x times y just gives us xy. 3 times negative 6 gives us negative 18 x times p gives us xp. So this is just distribution. We did this way, way, way back in the day. Well, if we can do it with polynomials, we have to be able to do it with radicals as well. It's mathematical operations that don't change. What you apply them to, that might change depending on what chapter we're on. But distribution works regardless of whether we're dealing with polynomials or with radicals. So here we have to distribute 7 radical 6 into 3 radical 10 minus 5 radical 15. So we would do exactly what you would do in the previous problem. We would multiply this term by the first term, which is what I did here, 7 radical 6 times 3 radical 10 minus this term on the outside, which is the GCF, and multiply it by 5 radical 15. So that goes right here. Now, when we multiply radicals, we're back to our previous problem. We multiply the coefficients together, so 7 times 3 gives us 21. The indices are the same, so square root, square root, both the index are 2 here. So we can multiply both of these into a single radical. So 6 times 10 goes inside the square root. Same thing here, negative 7 times 5 is negative 35, so that goes outside. And then because I have a product in the middle, I can use the product rule in reverse and rewrite 6 times 15 inside a single radical here. Going from this step to the next, all I've done is multiplied 6 and 10, that gives me 60. Here I've multiplied 6 and 15, that gives me 90. So now you might say, okay, well, I should be done at this stage, but then we're again betraying or not being careful with the fundamental rule uh, or the notion behind radicals. We want to be left behind with the smallest possible number inside the radical or as a radicand. So again, we start thinking about our list of perfect squares. What's the largest number on that list? Less than 60, uh, 49. And then you can start going all the way up until 4. That's the only factor that works. So we can rewrite 60 as 4 times 15. The 21 is just coming down. You can see the 21 just keeps coming along for the ride as does the 35. And we do the same sort of analysis with 90. The largest factor less than 90 on the list of perfect squares is 81, 
but none of the factors up until nine are going to work. So you get to nine times 10, which gives us 90. And because I have a product in the middle here and I have a product in the middle here, I can split up the radicals into two. So I can cut this in half and I can cut this in half, which is to say that I get radical four times radical 15. Radical four is just two. Radical nine is three and radical 10 just comes along for the ride. Now we just multiply the coefficients together. 21 times two is 42. 35 times three is 105. Radical 15 comes down, radical 10 comes down. So again, just like we did in the last section, when we combine like terms, we only add or subtract the coefficients. The reason why we cannot combine like terms here is because even though the indices are the same, this is the square root and this is the square root, the radicals, or sorry, the radicand, or the thing that you're taking the square root of, are different. So that's why this is the final answer. You cannot combine like terms here. You don't have like terms to combine to begin with. This is uh, similar to the previous problem. Instead of multiplying by one term or distributing one term, we're just foiling or distributing multiple terms. So here we have radical five times ra four radical 10 and then radical five times six radical 10. Then we have to multiply negative two radical three by four radical 10 and negative two radical three by six radical six. This is exactly the same way we did it with polynomials. Nothing changes here. Oops. Everything remains exactly the same. The procedure is identical. So I wrote out all the terms that I just read out here in the first line. And at this stage, we can just start multiplying the terms on the outside on the insides together. So one times four gives me four, and you'll see all these fours are that one four that just keeps getting written down again and again. Because I'm multiplying and the indices are the same, I can multiply five and 10 and put them inside a single radical. Here, I have a one on the outside as a coefficient, a six here, one times six is six. 5 times 6, because I have a product and the indices are the same, I can combine them into a single radical. Here I have negative 2 times 4, that gives me negative 8. 3 and 10 get glued together inside a single radical because I have a product. Similarly, negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. 3 times 6 gets inside the single radical. Going from here to here, I just combined the, the module multiply the numbers inside the radical together. So three times six is 18, three times 10 is 30, five times six is 30, five times 10 is 50. Now again, you might see here that I have radical 50, radical 30, radical 30, and radical 18. Radical 30 and radical 30 are like terms because I have the same index and the radicands are the same as well. So I can combine these two before I simplify because that would require me to simplify only one term as opposed to simplifying two of these individually and then combining like terms. That's more work. So six minus eight gives me negative two radical 30. So basically you see that four radical 50 just comes down. Negative two radical 18 comes down. Negative 12 radical 18, sorry, comes down. And these two terms I combined into a single term of negative two radical 30. Now, these three individual radicals I have to simplify if possible. So radical 50, we think of our perfect squares. 49 is not a factor, 36 is not a factor, 25 is. So I can rewrite 50 as 25 times two. For 30, we can think of uh, the largest square under 30 is 25. 25 is not a factor of this. 16 is not a factor. Neither is nine, nor is four. So that means radical 30 just remains as radical 30. We cannot split it up into a perfect square and some other factor. And then radical 18, 18 uh, 16 is less than 18 as a perfect square, but 16 is not a factor. Nine thankfully is, so we can split 18 into nine and two. Nine times two. 
Now here, oops, I made a mistake. This should have a radical around it. So what we're doing is we're splitting this up into two different radicals. Forgive me for this mistake. Please put the radical here. Hopefully I didn't carry this over onto the next page because I copy pasted. But essentially what we're doing is using the product rule and splitting this radical into two, giving us radical 25 and radical two. Again, please make sure you put the radical here. Minus two times radical 30, minus 12 times radical nine times radical two. And, oh, never mind, I put it here. Four times radical 25 times radical two. So this is what the last line on this last slide was supposed to look like. There should have been a radical here. Radical 25 is five. This just comes along for the ride because there's nothing we can do with this. Radical nine is three. So now we multiply the coefficients together. Four times five gives us the 20. This whole term just comes down. Negative 12 times three is negative 36. And the radical two comes along for the ride. Now, if you notice, I have a radical two here and I have a radical two here. Because their indices are the same and the radicands are the same, that means that this term, negative 36 radical two and 20 radical two are like terms, which means I can add and subtract them. So 20 minus 36 gives me negative 16. Radical two, we never touch the radicand. Minus two radical 30, this has just come along for the ride because radical 30 is as simple as it gets. We can't do anything with it. Here's another example, something slightly uh, longer. I gave more radicals with every single radical having a coefficient, but the process is identical. Nothing changes here. So here I have to multiply two radical five by seven radical two minus eight radical seven. And then I have to multiply negative three radical six by seven radical two and then negative eight radical seven. That's exactly what I wrote out here. That's the first line. And now we just multiply the coefficients together first. So two times seven gives me 14. Because both of these are square roots, I can stick them into a single radical. And because I'm also multiplying here. Two times negative eight is negative 16. Five times seven combines into a single radical. Negative three times seven is negative 21. Six times two goes inside this radical. Negative three times negative eight is positive 24. Six times seven goes inside this radical. So if you do this in order and you don't get lazy and you don't start skipping steps, it's very, very simple to just follow the rules and keep going. If you start skipping steps, there's a very high likelihood that you make a small mistake and then the whole thing is off as a result of that. So going from this stage to this stage, I simply multiplied all the radicands together. So 42 comes from six times seven, six times two is 12, five times seven is 35, five times two is 10. Now we start thinking about uh, how do we reduce these because there are no like terms. So I have radical 10, radical 35, radical 12, and radical 42. While all the indices are the same, None of the radicands are the same, so I cannot combine like terms since I don't have any. So the only thing left to do is to reduce or simplify the fraction, not the fraction, sorry, the radical as much as possible. So we think of what's the largest square less than nine, or less than 10? It's nine. Nine is not a factor of 10, so then the next number we think of is four. Four is not a factor of 10 either. So radical 10 remains radical 10 as it does for the rest of the problem. We cannot simplify it. The largest square less than 35 is 25, but 25 is not a factor. Neither is 16, neither is nine, neither is four. So that means radical 35 is as simple as it gets. And that's why we just copy it down again and again and again and again. I'm going to skip this for a second. The radical 12, obviously we can see that it splits. Uh, radical 42, the largest square less than 42 is 36, which is not a factor. Neither is 25, neither is 16, neither is 9 or 4. And that means this is just going to come along for the ride. So we see that the first, second, and the last term just keep coming down again and again and again and again. Nothing changes between these terms. 
However, for 12, the largest square less than 12 is 9. 9 is not a factor, but 4 is. So we can rewrite 12 as 4 times 3. Because there's a product, using the product rule, I can split this into two radicals, giving me radical 4 times radical 3. Square root of 4 is 2, and negative 21 times 2 is negative 42. And radical 3 comes along for the right. Now, if we look at the very end, we had already determined that radical 10, radical 35, and radical 42 were not like terms. If they were, we could have combined them at this stage. But since we got all the way to the end, if we couldn't have done it here, we certainly cannot do that here. But radical 3 is not a like term with any of these either, because even though the indices are the same, the radicands are different. So in this problem, you have even less to do than the previous question, where you could have combined these two terms at the end. In this question, we don't have the ability to do even that. So that's it. The problem is finished. And that's it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Have a nice day.